In this video, we're going to compare single atoms, molecules, and solids, which have lots and lots of molecules in them. So here's a single atom. This molecule has three to five atoms bonded together, and the uh, solid here has a ton of molecules. So let's take a look at what atoms can absorb. We know that atoms can absorb different wavelengths of light. And the reason is because the electrons can be promoted to higher energy levels. For each transition, a specific frequency or wavelength will promote the electron. Because there's a finite number of, uh, of energy levels, there are only specific wavelengths that can be produced. Now, molecules are a little bit more diverse. They have three or four or however many bonded atoms. And when these atoms bond, the electron energy levels mix together. So now there's a wider range because this mixing enables more opportunities. It creates new energy levels. But there's another thing that molecules can do, a second unique way that they can absorb light. Molecules are capable of vibrating back and forth. And they're also capable of rotating. There are vibrational frequencies and rotational frequencies at which the motion occurs. So how do they start vibrating? They absorb infrared photons that match the frequencies of vibration. How do they start rotating? They absorb other photons that match the infrared frequencies of rotation. So this is a huge idea for us. There's a second way for molecules to absorb photons, not by electron ex excitation, but by engaging in this vibrational or rotational uh, motion. OK, so we've done uh, molecules. What about solids? We're going to take the case of an ideal solid, which we call a black body. And we'll learn why we call it that in a bit. Now, solids have tons of electrons. So there's a lot of mixing. They also have tons of molecules. And so those molecules have so many different ways they can bump into each other and vibrate. And because of how diverse solids are, they can actually, a perfect ideal solid, can absorb all of the possible light that might be shined on it. That includes UV, visible, and infrared. It absorbs it all. Now there's an important idea here. If something can absorb light, then it can also emit light. If you think about a hot car, why does the car heat up? Because it absorbs the sunlight coming down from the sun. But that's not the only thing that happens. If you, if you then get onto the seat and sit down, it feels hot. Why is that? Because once the car absorbs that heat or that energy, it starts emitting heat as well. So objects that absorb also emit radiation. Now, <clears throat> the emitted radiation is different from the absorbed radiation. Here's how. Objects emit radiation based on their temperature. Something that's really hot will have a graph of emitted radiation that looks like this. Notice how it's really hot, and it's primarily emitting light in this range, in kind of the green frequency range. If the object is cooler, it emits less radiation, so there's less intensity. And it's primarily in the yellow range. Even cooler is like this, cooler like this. And objects like the seat of your car, they only emit infrared. That's how cool they are. So here's that spectrum. Here's what it looks like. Now. Because of how the Earth works, it acts like a black body. It absorbs that visible light from the sun. And what does it emit? Well, infrared, because it's at a lower temperature. So it kind of converts this visible light into infrared light. Let's take a look at that. Here's the visible light coming from the sun. And the sun emits this spectrum because it's nice and hot. And then here's the light emitted from the Earth. So the Earth converts this visible light from the sun into infrared. The emission is based on the temperature. 